than we are human. The we are the stupidest animals on the planet. Exactly. Hi guys, welcome back to the channel. Sorry about the green screen like room, uh, any background noise, lighting issues, sound issues. We're recording in less than ideal conditions today, but we have a great video for you anyway. We do. Last year we made a response video to Hank Green of the Vlog Brothers and his video, Why Are Vegetarians Annoying? Well, he's made another video on another channel of his, uh, Crash Course, and this one is called Non-Human Animals Crash Course Philosophy Number 42. Sounds very interesting. It does. And it's... this Crash Course channel has 5.3 million yeah. subscribers, so it's a huge platform. And we just want to say how positive is it yes. that they're discussing very important issues like this. That's right. I mean, it opens up great uh, conversation and an opportunity for channels like ours to respond. That's what we're doing today. We've had a few requests for a reaction video. Now, the Crash course video is 10 minutes long we obviously yeah. don't have time to re uh, respond to every minute of it otherwise this will be a 20 to 30 minute long video <laughs> yeah. so we're just going to uh, respond to selected parts but exactly. we haven't seen the video before so this is our raw reaction that's it we've got the laptop here let's go remember cecil the lion a lot of people were shocked even outraged when they heard about his death at the hands of an american hunter in 2015. the response to the lion's death was so strong that the guy who shot cecil basically went into hiding until he issued an apology but isn't that a little bit strange? We react with horror when we hear about a majestic lion being shot, or sacks of kittens being tossed into rivers, or owners training their dogs to fight each other for sport. But what is the difference between killing Cecil and killing a deer, or a duck, or a cow, or a chicken? I like where this is going. <laughs> and Hank, good. that is the question yeah. that every vegan is asking exactly. non-vegans. How do we reconcile the strong feelings many of us have about certain animals, mainly the cute ones like kittens and puppies, with the way we actually use animals in our own lives? We go vegan. Yeah. <laughs> it is really Easy. that simple. That's the answer. Video done, yeah. honestly. But yeah. let's get further into it. <laughs> animals for their meat, milk, or skins, and not only do we use animals in these ways, but using them as we do almost always harms them. A common method for testing cosmetics, for example, involves restraining rabbits and putting the product into their eyes, leaving it for a set amount of time, and then washing it out and checking for ill effects. Rabbits are used... See, I just think this is fantastic that a channel like this, a non-vegan channel with such a huge audience, is bringing this important information to their audience, uh, whether they're interested in veganism or not. They're starting to learn about animal rights issues. Yes. And Very important. Exactly. And if you want to uh, learn more about animal testing, please watch Earthlings. We'll link it yes. in the description below. And also you can avoid all of that pain, harm and suffering to those animals uh, by buying vegan cosmetics. On factory farms, chickens are housed in tiny cages with each bird occupying a space the size of a piece of standard printer paper. Their beaks are often cut down to keep them from pecking each other. And when they're no longer laying enough eggs, they're killed. These are just a couple examples of the conditions animals... So we wonder if Hank has made any dietary changes since his previous video last year because he's got so much information and he had this information last year but his conclusion at the end of that video was but it's easier and it's convenient and I like it so mm. I'm still going to eat animals. Very interesting to see or to know if, if he has made any changes. It would be. And also uh, Hank is talking specifically about caged eggs here. Mm. Now the answer is not cage free eggs or free range eggs because the same treatment occurs to the chickens uh, except that they're put in by the tens of thousands into large sheds still crammed into a, you know, a bigger cage essentially. So that's not the answer. The answer is not eating eggs at all. We'd never dream of using another human being in these ways, but we think nothing of doing it to non-human animals. So how do we let ourselves do that? And Speciesism. Mm. A, Very a form of discrimination uh, similar to racism or sexism, ableism, any other kind of uh, discrimination, except it applies to species where our species believes that it's superior to all other species and therefore we're entitled to use them however we wish. Australian philosopher Peter Singer uses the word speciesism to describe giving preference to our own species over another in the absence of morally relevant differences. Singer reminds us that there was a time when most Americans thought it was totally normal and right for members of one group to literally own members of another group based on a morally irrelevant difference, skin color. Boom. Boom. That's Done. it. That's it. Done. Yeah. 
one arbiter you might use to justify the difference is intelligence. There's no question that as a species, our intelligence trumps that of every other species on the planet. But we don't normally think that intelligence is a good way for deciding how you get treated. Dystopian novels like Brave New World bring out the visceral distaste we have for that kind of intelligence-based caste system. So if it's clearly wrong to treat members of our species differently based on intelligence, why would it be okay to treat members of other species differently on that same basis? We're going to link a video down below called Speciesism the Movie and this um, movie basically is going to address what uh, Hank is talking about here and we assume he goes on to in more detail in this video and looks at all of these reasons of how we justify our treatment of non-human animals based on speciesism. Uh, very, very interesting. So that will answer a lot of questions. Yeah, and also who could argue with Hank that um, obviously the human beings aren't the most intelligent species on Earth Having said that, how do we define intelligence? Mm. You know, if you were to define intelligence as one's ability to coexist uh, in its environment, uh, causing the least amount of harm and suffering to its environment and everyone else in it, then we human, are the stupidest we are, animals on the planet. Exactly. So it all depends on how you define mm. intelligence. Yeah, I mean, no other animal actually destroys the environment and all the life systems it needs. To sustain its own life. Yeah, I mean, if, that's not intelligent. No, I mean, if the human species were to disappear overnight, every yeah. other living organism on the planet, including the Earth itself, would benefit. Therefore, are we really the most intelligent mm. species? It all depends on how you define intelligence. But maybe you think we should treat other animals the way we do just because we can. Contemporary American philosopher Carl Cohen, for example, calls himself a proud speciesist. He argues that every species is struggling to claw its way to the top, and that's how it should be. Every species ought to be concerned about protecting itself, he says, and since humans are currently at the top, well, that means that we're the best, so we can pretty much do whatever we want to other beings. The problem with this reasoning is... And how's that working out for everyone on the Earth? The thing is, we're not doing what's best for us. By eating animal products, we're killing ourselves. We're killing the planet, and we're killing other life, other living beings on the planet. That doesn't benefit us in any way except for immediate sensory pleasure of taste. All oh, this tastes good. And a lot of money for the corporations that profit from consumer demand for these yeah. products. And of course, obviously, just because we can do something doesn't make it right. Or it doesn't mean that we should certainly not be okay with it if you weren't a member of the privileged species. Remember, this is the exact argument that was given by slave owners to justify their domination of Africans and indigenous peoples. Yet another rationale is that this is the way it's always been. And it's true, humans have been dominating non-human animals for a really long time. It's part of our culture and entire ways of life are based on it. Farmers were... About 10,000 years, actually. And if you want to learn more about it, we highly recommend the book The World Peace Diet by mm -hmm. Dr. Will Tuttle. He goes into the history of animal agriculture. Yeah, and just to keep in mind, we've also been murdering and raping humans for since the beginning of time. It doesn't mean that it's right and that we should continue to do it today. One of the strongest arguments for our uses of non-human animals is the argument of need. Most people believe that we're justified in doing what it takes in order to survive. In fact, most people even think it's okay to kill another human in the name of self-defense. This argument doesn't justify using animals for non-necessary things like cosmetics testing, but eating is a necessity, so there's nothing wrong with eating animals, right? The problem is we know humans can be perfectly healthy without eating animals, so yes. In fact, you can only be perfectly healthy without eating animals. Given that 14 of the 15 leading causes of our death have been scientifically linked to eating animal products, and of course, not plants. That's right, and of course I should say not perfectly healthy because there's no such thing as perfect health. Environmental factors do of course affect our health, but as Lucas said, when our leading causes of death are linked to eating animal products, then the best thing we can do for ourselves is cut those animal products out yes. and focus on a plant-based diet. Exactly, especially when the best available balance of scientific yes. evidence is pointing that way. The question is not, can they reason, nor can they talk, but rather, can they suffer? Because we are all alike in our capacity to suffer and in our desire to avoid suffering. Utilita I just want to say that if Hank doesn't announce that he's vegan at the end of this video, I will not understand why. Agreed. It's, it's right there. You've got it, Hank. Make that connection. Yep. Now, to be clear, as utilitarians, these thinkers would never issue an out-and-out -out prohibition on the use of non-human animals. What they're against is the unthinking... That's why we would recommend that people look into the work of Professor Gary Francione. We're going to link his work in the description box below. Please go and check out the links um, because Gary Francione takes this uh, philosophy, this utilitarian welfarist philosophy, to the abolition of the use of animals. 
So if the issue is really about need, if you're literally starving and the only thing around to eat is an animal, they'd argue that you're morally justified in eating it, because the suffering involved in your death by starvation would outweigh the suffering of the animal. The problem- And the thing is, none of us, certainly watching YouTube, are in a situation where it's life or death and we're starving. We have an abundance of plant foods all around us in supermarkets, in markets. Um, you know, you, you don't need to eat animals. Exactly. So our response to the often asked question, oh, but what if you were on, uh, stranded on a desert island and for survival reasons you had to eat, eat an animal? Uh, what would you do then, vegan? Well, our response is always, well, what if you lived in Western civilization with access to an abundance of plant foods? Would you still choose to eat animals then? For most people in the industrialized world today, it's not about need, it's simply about taste and convenience and how things have always been done. Here's Fluffy. She's been your close companion since she was a kitten. You love her very much and you've given her the best life you could. But now, Fluffy is nearing the end of her life. You'll care for her until the end, but when she dies, why not eat her? I mean, unless you're a vegetarian, there seems to be no good reason that you'd be repelled by this idea, but you almost certainly are. Takes and this is a great example. This is the best, this is the most humane meat uh, you can ever think of. Yes. It's free range, it's cage free. It's, it's lived a good life, it's yeah, been cared for. It's loved. Eat the dead cat, why not? So if you're only not eating her because you have a thing against eating cats in particular, but you're okay with eating other animals, that seems pretty speciesist. It's just that the species that you're giving preference to are both humans and cats, but you're still a speciesist. Thanks, Thought Bubble. Okay, so... Spot on. Yeah. And these um, uh, decisions are so arbitrary mm. as to which species we prefer to favour because it varies from culture to culture as well, doesn't it? Exactly. I mean, cats and dogs are eaten in some cultures mm. and they're uh, worshipped and treated as members of, their, of our Family. families in others. So, mm. you yeah. know, it's so arbitrary. Why should I care? What if I don't care that I'm a speciesist? I like eating meat and feel no shame about it because everyone I know... And this the, is apathy, yes. and apathy has got us yeah. to the state that we're in in the mm. world at the moment. Yeah. Philosophers want you to be consistent with your beliefs. They want you to think about why you think it would be wrong to eat Fluffy, or why you wouldn't eat dog meat if it was served to you, or why you were upset about Cecil the Lion, and yet you have no problem eating, say, bacon, even though dogs and pigs have the same level of cognition and awareness. Philosoph I love, again, I just love how much information oh. he's feeding to his audience. It is fantastic. It's, it's like he's... Uh, it's, if, it's as if he were a big yeah, absolutely. Because if these reasons don't matter, then why should any reasons matter? If I want to be a racist or a homophobe or a sexist, and I'm comfortable with it because the people I hang out with have those attitudes too, well, the conversation's sort of over. It can be really... Wait, there's nothing to respond to. This is perfect. This is exactly what we would say. So he's, he's spot on. Hard to scrutinize your own actions, not just regarding non-human animals, but in most areas of your life. Trash Course Philosophy is produced in association with PBS... And that's why I've chosen to go vegan. Where's the ending? <laughs> that was really good. Yeah, um, and in fact, uh, I remember after our response video to Hank's previous video last year, Why Are Vegetarians So Annoying? People were telling us that Hank actually would mm, benefit a lot from eating a plant-based diet because he has, some, I think it's ulcerative colitis or so. something like, sim very similar. Um, so we're going to leave some links down below that we wish we'd uh, known at the time that he was suffering from so that we could have shared them with him. Yeah. Um, just to look yeah. further into it from a health perspective. Absolutely. So I think to summarise this, um, very, very interesting points. The main takeaway is that we, in 2017, in fact, from way before 2017 and way after 2017, we don't need to eat animals. We're not in a survival situation. It's not us or them and you can't justify it. Yeah, it's there's, not there's, morally just, justifiable. Yeah, they're just excuses that we like to latch onto because, you know, everyone else is doing it and it's slightly inconvenient and etc. Um, but there really is no reason to continue, no justifiable reason. And always, as we say, if you put yourself in the animal's position from the perspective of the victim, if it's not okay for you, then it's not okay for anyone else. Beautifully said. Video done. Thank you so much for watching, guys. Leave your comments down below. We'd love to hear from you. Let's continue this yes. discussion. Thank you so much to Hank for raising yes. this and putting this information out there. We're still waiting for your <laughs> I've Gone Vegan video, Hank. <laughs> Don't forget to give this video a thumbs up, share it around. Don't forget to ding the bell. To receive notifications for our upcoming videos. And remember until next time that going vegan is not the most we can do. It's the least we can do.
It's the very baseline. See you next video. Bye guys. Don't drop the camera. <laughs> <laughs>